It's a little hot in here. Hmm. All right. Um, let's lean back a little bit. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome back or welcome to Look Into My Life. My name is Angela. If it's your first time here, I like to make fashion, lifestyle, beauty, and fitness content on this channel. Today is going to be a little bit of a different kind of video. Oh my goodness, I'm totally blinking now that I'm sitting here. Yeah, so today's going to be a little bit different because I am going to be talking about something that's a little more personal, something that is something that I never thought that I would talk about on this channel because you know you know how social media is a lot of us mostly all of us we usually like to showcase like the highlights the good stuff the good fun and amazing parts of our lives so I always envision myself filming this video from the other way around like from from the end looking back I envisioned myself creating this video from once I got out of the depression to looking back to being like, wait, this is how I got out of it. So I didn't think that I would film it when I'm still kind of in the middle um, of it or, you know, on the way to the end of, of it. Yeah, it's going to be more of a personal video, obviously. I'm debating whether or not this video is going to be released because I will be discussing something that personal that I don't necessarily have to talk about. Um, I don't have to talk about any of my medical diagnosis or anything like that on this channel, but you know, I just kind of, obviously if you're seeing this, then something has occurred where I feel like I want to share this video with everyone. Today I was in like a little bit of a better mood. Okay. You know, I got dressed, did my hair, did my makeup, and wanted to come on here looking a little bit put together for everyone. All right, so let's just go ahead and jump right into this video. Living with major depressive disorder. Major depressive disorder is also known as clinical depression or MDD. There are different types of depression. I'm going to put like a little screenshot of that on the screen. Where it separates this one from the other ones is with MDD, it's unipolar. So you're either feeling normal, like just yourself, or you are in a depressed episode, depressed mood. So that's the difference between this type versus like persistent depression or high functioning depression. Um, they all have like similar characteristics, but there's obviously different types and different severity levels. So this one is one of the more um, debilitating ones. It's one of, one of the more severe ones because of the ways that it impacts and it affects the lives of the people that are experiencing it. I guess I want to just start off this video by kind of clearing up some stigmas because I'm going to be talking about it. I kind of want us to all be a little bit on the same page about what depression is. This video is made for, I guess, entertainment purposes or just for viewers. I'm sharing my story. It's not um, a medical, like don't use this video to diagnose yourself at all. I mean, I do have a background in psychology, but I'm not um, a registered therapist. Everyone experiences depression differently. Um, the direct cause is not always known. There are several things that can cause depression. It's most likely due to your genes, to your brain chemistry, to life events, and just overall general stress. So it's something that can happen to anybody. Um, and of course, some people are more vulnerable to it. Depression is not a weakness. It's not a character flaw. It's not because of a negative attitude or because somebody's being negative and they need to start being more positive or whatever it's not because of those things it's a very complicated mental mental illness yeah you know i can only speak from my experience really but for me it's one of those things where it's like, like i have self-esteem i have self-love and I, I still feel those things those positive emotions of like feeling good about me so um but then at the same time especially when i'm in a depressed mood or experiencing like some sort of a depressive episode that that is really lasting a while and it's making it hard for me to get out of bed to be to function to do things then that's when i will be having more of those heavier thoughts of just the sadness it's very strange to describe it feels very gloomy feels heavy as i said earlier you know it's not because of a negative attitude it's not because of a character flaw it's you know more to do with your genes it's more to do with your brain chemistry so it's really just the hormones and whatever's going on up here there are three main neurotransmitters in the brain that kind of are responsible for this sort of feel good control our motivation our you know our energy the three main neurotransmitters that 
are kind of responsible for our mood would be dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine, which is really hard for me to pronounce that last one, but I think I said it right. If somebody is experiencing depression, they obviously have low levels of serotonin or low levels of um, norepinephrine or dopamine, and you know, that's why a lot of the times um, psychiatrists or medical doctors will refer things such as antidepressants that will kind of help get the person's brain chemistry back to a normal functioning level or people will suggest things like working out, like going out with friends, socializing, things of that nature just to kind of get those feel-good hormones starting to kick off in your body again. Um, but with anyone that's been depressed, they know that, you know, it's not always as easy as going out or just doing the things you love because when you're experiencing depression, you just stop even enjoying or loving the things that you used to love. I know that's what it feels like for me. I don't even like anything I used to like. For me, this is not something that I struggled with all my life or anything. I, it started for me when I was 21. I'm 24 now, so it's kind of something I've been going through for three years, a little bit of up and down roller coaster, and I'm learning what works for my body, what doesn't, what feels, you know, what makes me feel better, what doesn't. Yeah, so it's been a three year process, and every time I tell doctors, therapists, anyone, um, this started three years ago for me. The first question people ask me is, what happened three years ago and I could think back to that time and I can think of several things that happened um, but I know for me that it was kind of accumulation of many events many life stressors many losses a lot of grieving all at once and it kind of plummeted me into that and I couldn't get out of it before that I had never experienced depression I didn't even know it was possible to feel like this like feel this heavy it's something i wouldn't even wish on my worst enemy like and i don't have enemies but you know if i did i wouldn't even wish this on them because it is so it's so complicated it's just like very very heavy and yeah it's not as easy as snap out of it or it's just not it's not one of those things that can just be snapped out of and I really wish it was, but it's not. It's funny, I was, I was a psych major. I was kind of in my last year when this started for me. And, you know, I just, I had the hardest time completing my degree. I, I graduated when I was 21, but I had a difficult time the last year because I couldn't get myself to focus, to concentrate, to study. I couldn't keep up. And luckily, because most of my professors were psychology professors, I opened up to them. They understood. And they actually gave me extensions. Obviously, it's really hard to just basic tasks like completing assignments or even being on time or for me I have it where I can't sleep at night like sleeping at night is hard and staying asleep so I will be running on maybe two three hours of sleep um I'll fall asleep and then I'll wake up and my mind just starts going because for me it's not just the depression I was also diagnosed with anxiety too so MDD major depressive disorder and anxiety yeah for me it was one of those things where a lot of things happened at once there was a lot of stuff i was experiencing with the pageants i participated in miss universe canada and in miss universe zimbabwe but that world is cutthroat and it is not nice but yeah it's a lot you know the way the us girls are treated in that process it just was not helpful that i was participating in that at the same time as when i kind of started experiencing depression symptoms because it kind of made it worse it made it worse for me. It just made, really deteriorated my mental health fast. And I don't want to make this video sound self-pitying. And that's also another misconception is people think you're just trying to feel sorry for yourself or you're throwing a pity party. I, I posted something in my community tab about real depression. Real depression is when you stop loving the things you love. Another thing that people would often say to me is, you know, maybe you just need to find a purpose. You need to focus on your purpose. You need to focus on your thing and your purpose and, you know, do what makes you happy. And to somebody who has been diagnosed with major depressive disorder, and as somebody who's experiencing that, it really, really feels like nothing makes me happy. Nothing. It's so bad to the point where I just think it's all pointless. There's no point. I remember saying that to a psychiatrist bar. I was like, there's just no point. What's the point to all this? What are we doing here? Like, what is this? And it's such a horrible place to, but that's what it feels like. Um, that's the reality of it is, you know, going through life feeling like this is all pointless. It doesn't matter. You know, it just leaves me feeling very empty, very apathetic, extremely apathetic. I had these ideations and thoughts of 
what it would be like to delete myself out of this realm or not be here. Um, but I never wanted to act on it until a year ago last year. I'm a little hesitant about saying this on camera, but you know, it's part of it's kind of part of the journey um, until I really wanted to act on it. And I, long story short, I ended up in the hospital in Emerge in the Emerge room, um, and then from there I was admitted into the hospital just so they can figure out you know what was going on and for those of you who have family who suffered from this and, and lost family it, it's a painful thing to go through and it's a painful thing to see somebody you love going through it what always helps when you have a good support system when you have a good family when you have good friends when you are in a loving supportive happy relationship with somebody that doesn't judge you for that but instead is like we're gonna do this we're gonna get through this together be there to listen to hug them to hold them even just that goes a long way when we hug people we get a, a release of those feel-good hormones even if it's just for five minutes that helps a lot and then of course making sure you're also taking care of yourself because one thing i learned when i was um, in my therapy and when i was hospitalized is that emotions can be contagious it's also important to take care of you if you're caring for somebody with depression also take care of you carve that time to take care of you to fall into your cup it takes patience a lot of patience and being gentle with somebody as they go through it because for me it's my third year in this and did i think i would still be experiencing this after three years no i did not but i have to be patient with me it might take 10 years it might be just two more weeks in this and then i'm out of it who knows? I don't know. God knows. But I do not know how long I will be in this. But I have to be patient with me. And me, I went through it alone for the first two years because I didn't want to tell anyone. I didn't want my family to worry. I didn't want anybody to worry about me. I don't like people worrying about me. That's why I also didn't tell you guys. So this is huge. The fact that I'm filming this video, is, for me, it's huge because I'm like, okay, wow. Not only did I tell my family, some of my friends, I also am now telling my subscribers and pretty much the world because anyone could be watching this video and once it's out there you know everyone is gonna have access to it um everyone and anyone yeah it was really hard the first two years when i was experiencing it um on my own all i'm gonna say is please check on your friends and family and, and people that you love and care about because um we need each other i know i need I need it but um yeah it, like nobody wants to go through things alone and i was such in my own bubble isolating myself i think like there was a year i barely left the house for a year at one point and this was not during covid because for my depression it started after covid ironically i also wanted to talk about what it's like to be experiencing this and people not really knowing or seeing because for me like people didn't see it my personality is more bubbly like and i just don't again i don't like people worrying about me or feeling sorry for me i don't really like that type of attention so for me it was very easy to hide it and then also on the outside looking in i had people that were like oh my goodness angela like you have kind of everything going for yourself you have you know these opportunities coming in there was a lot of things that i should have been where on the outside looking in people would be like but why are you depressed when you have this you have this you have that for me whenever i heard people say things like that i know that they meant well i know that my friends my family or anyone who says those things means well um however for me what i was experiencing when i'd hear it like it made me feel worse it made me feel even more guilty and that's part of the depression is you feel guilt and shame because you feel like why do i feel so crappy it's a very very strange thing to experience especially coming from before when i had never experienced depression i knew what it felt like to be her and sometimes i look back at pictures before 21 and, and i'm like oh my gosh like i i miss her i miss that version of me that laughed and had fun and really and when i laughed and when i smiled i meant it now it's like a if i'm smiling that doesn't necessarily it's just there because i don't want anyone else to be worried and i yeah, it's a very weird disconnected feeling that I'm that I feel sometimes where I'm like just very apathetic. I'm not I just I'm not caring as much as I used to about myself, my life, don't even reach out to hang out with anybody. And then it just turns into this vicious cycle because the more I don't reach out to hang out with anyone, the more I, you know, lay in my bed for days, the more depressed I'm gonna feel because I'm not doing the things that I need to do to feel happy again. This is why it's so important to reach out to, to doctors, to people, and and get the help. If you can't get out of bed, 
get a friend to come and, and sit there and put movies on with you or, or whatever. Like, it's so important to have that support because it's something that you, you can't get out of alone. And if you don't have that friends or family network, then talk to therapists, call the hotline, talk to doctors, talk to anyone who you can talk to. I'm grateful to be living in Canada where that's an option. Yeah, it's really hard when you open up to people about it and you think like your friends are going to be there for you. You think, you know, this person is going to be there for you and be your rock or be some sort of a support and they're not. It can be, it's really painful and, you know, it's really painful to experience something like that. And if anyone is listening to this and you felt like people have tried to make you feel horrible about it, like something's wrong with you, nothing's wrong with you. And if nobody told you, I just want to tell you that you are not your depression. You're experiencing depression. It sucks. It's real. It's painful. It's serious. It's severe, especially if you're in your early 20s. It can paralyze you. And this is the part in your life where you're supposed to be the most social, the most productive. And for me, I felt like three years gone to waste. Like it really, and it, it hurts to think about. You are not your depression. Like I tell myself that all the time. I'm like, I'm not my depression. That's not me. I'm not gonna let it define me. I'm not letting anyone judge me because of it. And that's what I'm here to say to you. Do not let anyone judge you because you're going through this. Um, I'm definitely not judging you and please don't be your worst critic in this. Something that a psychiatrist said to me, she said, you know, if a person breaks their leg, they're bleeding out everywhere and you can kind of you can see that you can see that this person has broken their leg so we all kind of rush to be like all right what's going on are you okay and you know let's give you painkillers to help that nobody says no don't take painkillers you should feel the pain let it let yourself feel it let yourself feel the pain of the broken leg nobody says that to the person with the broken leg they get the help they need they're given the pain medication that they need and they are given the supports that they need and people understand that it's not going to happen overnight they might have to wear a cast for a year it might take a year and even then they're still a little fragile still a little vulnerable to another leg break in between that time and, and even after because kind of once you've broken your leg you can break that same leg again right the same thing is with depression except now it's your brain it's you know your neurons um your neurotransmitters they need a little extra attention it's not you we are not our emotions because of how easily manipulated our emotions can be. You know, we're not necessarily our, our emotions. And same thing with my leg. If my leg is broken, does that mean that I'm a broken person? No. If my leg is broken, then that just means that I have a broken leg. I have a broken leg. I'm experiencing pain in my leg because the leg is broken and it needs to be healed. Same thing with depression. If I'm experiencing ideations about wanting to delete myself, if I'm experiencing low mood, I can't get out of bed, not eating, that's not me. That's not who I am. I'm not broken. I'm not a depressed person. I'm not a negative person. There's nothing wrong with me as a person. There's nothing wrong with you as a person. Our brain is just needing a little more extra love and attention right now. It can be given that healing if it's allowed if you go and seek it out you can't get that until you stop judging that in yourself that's kind of the first step for me i've kind of accepted like all oh, right this is where i'm at this is you know it feels horrible to be up tossing and turning for hours at night it feels horrible to not want to be on this planet anymore those are the kind of the worst thoughts ever but if i'm being very blunt that's how bad it gets for me it gets to the point where i actually feel like i don't see the point i don't it hasn't been an easy thing to deal with, um, but I just thought it's kind of time that I share or talk about it because maybe it'll add some color to the fact of why I'm, I randomly disappear from my YouTube channel to, um, from time to time. And maybe somebody could see this and be like, you know what, I'm not alone. You know what, even if I'm depressed, I'm still lovable. My life is still worth living. Those are the things that I tell myself, like this morning I woke up and I was reading my affirmation. You know, I'm still worth it, even though this is a thing I'm experiencing. Like, it gets better, it will get better. I have to think that. And, you know, I'm glad I'm making this video today on my more hopeful day because if I made this video two, three days ago, I would have been sitting in this chair, tears streaming down. I would have been just an absolute mess. So I'm kind of starting to come out of that. I went to the gym for the first time in two weeks yesterday. So I'm kind of getting up, getting going. That's just kind of how it goes for me. It's a little bit of a up and down sort of thing. And maybe that's how it goes for you too. And most likely it is if you're watching this video or if you're just curious about how what it's like to live with major depressive disorder. A lot of people that are clinically depressed cry a lot, especially women will experience that. For me, the crying can be so bad that my eyes are like extremely puffy and then people will see me and they're like, what the heck is wrong? Like, what is going on with you? In that state, nothing can make me feel better. Not my favorite food, not my favorite TV show, not nothing, not even my favorite people, nothing. 
but that's what it's like for me. Maybe for you, some things make you feel better, some things don't. Um, it also depends on what is causing your depression, what started it, how long have you been experiencing it. It's just waking up and deciding like, okay, I'm just gonna keep trying. Some people need a little more help. Some people need maybe to try an antidepressant or diet change. Depression can be affected by our thyroid or B12 levels. So it's important to also get that physical checkup with your doctor to figure out what is exactly causing your depression because once you get to the root, then you can kind of sort of uncover things. I don't know if I want to leave the comments on or off. I'm hoping that people are gentle in the comments. I'll just share each other's experiences, lift each other up because life is hard enough as it is. We really don't need the hate or any of that. There's really not much else to say. I guess I will just end the video here. And I do want to thank you all for watching this video. I'm just going to leave it off as I'm going to keep trying my best. That's all we can do and I hope that you can too.